Well, it is a Saturday morning in West Tennessee. Good morning. This is Tricks of the Trade with West Tennessee's premier honeydew helper, John Allen. Phone lines will be open. We'll give you those numbers. In the meantime, here's John. Morning, everybody. How you doing, Jeff? I'm awake and alert so far. How well, about you? Well, I'm I'm kind of wiggling over here trying to get adjusted on this uh, fine <laughs> piece of furniture I'm sitting on. It, you know, it, not only is it uncomfortable, but it don't even look good. <laughs> well, you know. I, I mean, you got to have a little something, you know. I just hope I can keep on track this morning because the distractions of trying to balance on this crazy stool uh-huh. and smelling this sausage behind me. Oh, God, me I know. And the ham, I, it's just quite distracting. You I see, don't know what but, I'm going to do. But right now you're one up on me because you could go over there and have some of that. I can't. You can't? <laughs> no, because it's not on my shrinkage plan. <laughs> oh, you can't I don't have the little piece. I can't get the good stuff right oh, now. Bless your heart. Right now, hey, it's it's worth it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get healthy, trying to last a little longer. Well, that's... besides that, my doctor threatened me. <laughs> I've already lost one doctor. Yeah, yeah, outlived yeah. him, huh? Well, no, actually, my my doctor for as many years as I can remember, probably since he started doctoring. Uh, is now the head of the uh, the regional health department. Yeah, Doctor David. <laughs> David over there. Bryan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. Well, he'll get us all straight. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Good yeah. guy. Good yeah. guy. Oh, David's a great guy. Yeah. 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 Let's give everybody the phone numbers this morning. The phone lines will be open for your comments, your questions, and uh, we'll just kind of uh, meander around on some subjects of interest until we hear from you. What, as John always says. He'd rather talk to you than listen to himself ramble. So that's right. No, it's babble. Babble. That's babble, it. That's I'm right. the rambler. Yeah. You're the babbler. Okay. Yeah. You know, but you know, together we'll get a good conversation going. Let, let's call them in this morning, folks. Uh, Seven three one eight nine one six one six one. Right. Or the text line at seven three one four one zero seven five six zero. That's it. Any way you want to do it. Uh, Pick up the phone or, or get you, you, your special finger ready to punch in something on you. Yeah, on type your, it in on, on your... Uh, type it in, yeah. Yeah, yeah on your... On I, your I'm on a your, one finger. Yeah, I am too. One, one finger. I, I, don't, I don't do the thumbs thing. I don't know how to do that. No, I'm, I'm, uh, my thumbs don't work that way. You know, you have to take one hand off the steering wheel if you use both of them. <laughs> Whoops, true. can't say that. <laughs> can't say that. <laughs> I'm trying to learn. My car has, uh, has uh, voice recognition text. Uh-huh. But sometimes it doesn't hear what you say, and if, no. you're not, if you're not careful, it'll type something in there that you didn't really mean. So I don't use that hands-off feature very often. Now, I, I will, if you text me when I'm in my car, I, it has a feature on there where I can push it, <coughs> excuse me, push a button on my steering wheel, and it'll read me your text, which is very handy. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Technology, ain't isn't, it, wonderful. ain't it wonderful? Ain't the it trouble wonderful? is, you got to learn how to operate it. I know. Yeah, I know. I sp- I spent about forty five minutes sitting in the car with a sales guy when I bought that car, just going over things. Looks like I'm fixing to have to do that again. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, if you stay with the same basic vehicle, that maybe. Well, I hadn't learned all the gadgets on that one yet before <laughs> it laid down and died. Yeah. How many? How many? How many miles did you get before it croaked? I only got about 120,000. Well, that's not bad. That's not yeah, bad. No, yeah, three years, you know, yeah. 120,000. That's just yeah. a hop, skip, and a rattle away. Yep. And that's the trouble. It rattled too much. It, got the, it had convulsions. Ooh, not good. I mean, it had a conniption on the road going about 90 mi- oh, 65 60. miles an hour. <laughs> <laughs> good morning, Dan. Dan Morris in the house this morning. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah that's, that's, uh, that's a little distracting, isn't it? Well, it is. I mean, it it it, uh, it did everything but the hood fly up. Oh man! And I figured that was fixing to happen. <laughs> the aluminum hood. Yeah, aluminum yeah. hood. Yep, yeah. Yep, yep. Can't have a conversation during the rainstorm in that vehicle. Yeah, it's a little loud. In it there, is isn't it? very very loud. <laughs> oh that's man! All right. Seven three one eight nine one six one six one is the direct phone number. We'll be glad to talk to you this morning, or. Text us at 731-410-7560. Also, we're out there on uh, social media, on Facebook Live at y'all.com and News Talk West Tennessee, and it'll be on the YouTube channel a little bit later today.
How about that? You can't you can't uh, open one up without finding us. Can't get away from me. That's true. That's true. Many well, have tried. Many have tried. <laughs> many have tried. Many have failed. Yeah. Yes, I hear you. I hear you. What's, Wait, uh, what's on your mind today? Well, you know, I, uh, every once in a while, I run across an old book. Okay. And I like looking at the way things used to be because it explains why things are today Mm -hmm. you know i I always look for the answer to that why question why do you do what you got to do right and i was uh flipping through one the other day and believe it or not the most modern thing in that book electrical wise was they were talking about fuse panels wow you know fuses not breakers but fuses that's an old book yeah and um and, and it's the midst of, of going about that, which we're going to talk about that in a minute because insurance companies are having a conniption over fuse boxes for some reason nowadays. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't they got, get they got to have something. Yeah, they're, 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 they're going on one of their little rant and raves going on right now. But anyway, and as I was flipping the pages, it had a lot of useful tips if you lived on a farm. Yeah. And I hinted on this last week, and uh, – you know, every now and then, you got to see which way the wind's blowing if you live out on the farm. That's right. You know, I, I always use the finger method and, and, you know, figured it out where it was blowing or not. I used to could use my hair, but that one got away That's from me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, anyway, it, 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 one of the things that you apparently people would laugh at you. They'd call you one of them uppity people, one of them city slickers, mm-hmm. if you had a new weather vane, a shiny, shiny weather, new vane. weather vane. Yeah, you yeah. know, yeah, you, you don't know, come into little money. You, you try, you know, <laughs> if you got you a new shiny rooster up on the peak of your roof, you was a little uppity. Yeah, or you then. got phone calls from down the road and they say, "You have my condolences. Who passed?" That's right. <laughs> and that was a party line because everybody, everybody knew about knew it. it. <laughs> So, so here we go, you know, and so you got people that buy a weather vane, but they didn't want to put it up because it looked new. Right. And then, so somebody apparently put a note in this book and it says, you know how to make your weather vane look old if you get a new one. So people won't make those comments at you. You have to take your weather vane out to the barn. Yeah. And you throw it on the ground and cover it with cow manure. And leave it that way for about a week. Mm-hmm. And when that, then you go back and you pull it out of the poop and it's tarnished. I'd say so. It's also, <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, that was the way you, and they, they have a fancy word for that now. It's, I think it's patina. Yes. Oh, yeah. 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 Patinas, yes. Yeah. Or uh-huh. whatever that little skinny gal's name used to be uh, on high heels and went, went around. No, that was, what was her name? But I don't know. But. Well, that was Matilda. Matilda. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. If you. if you bury your weather vane in manure for about a week, those uh, um, animal acids and all that stuff would would tarnish that metal and make it look old and rusty. <laughs> okay. Which I is, haven't had call to do that lately. Well, weather vanes are not not high on people's list. Although you said the they're other day back. that they're coming back. Yeah, they are. I mean, you can go out here in town to uh, Walt Meston. Or you can go to Tractor Supply, right? Get you a fine weather vane. Really? And uh, they they got all kinds of things on them. You'll find them with little coaches and wagons and roosters mm-hmm. and uh, horses. Horses, yeah. Mm-hmm. Horses are very popular. Yep. A lot of this stamped metal art uh, is starting to <laughs> come back. Yeah. And it, and thing of it is, some of it's real metal and not just plastic. Wow. So. Uh, so what are most of them like a? <clears throat> like a chimney cap or something like that. Yeah, it's, yeah that, it, it's mainly just for ornaments. Yeah, you know, to look up there. I see very few of them that actually move. They just stick them up there. Yeah, and uh, people got away from those because it kind of became lightning rods. Yeah, I can imagine. And can uh, imagine. so, if you found one that really worked, you normally had a braided wire that went from the the foot of the rooster uh, <laughs> down down to your grounding. Uh, exactly. rod in your electrical system but anyway hmm. if you ever have the need to tarnish your weather vane, that's right Tim, find somebody with a barn and some cows yeah hmm. that's right you know. yeah and the good thing about that is though the, your neighbors to the south of you when the wind was out of the north they was the first to know it that's right <laughs> <laughs> I, you, you know have to that. think about that folks <laughs> 
how you know that, Martha? Well, John's weather vane, I can I can smell her. <laughs> <laughs> we got a northeaster coming in. <laughs> That's right. You know, we got the and, and, and we smell the folks sometimes that down in counts when that mill gets up yeah, just right, yeah. you know, and they don't even have a weather vane down there. Yeah, I told, I told uh, Daryl Hicks the other day, I said, you know, when you get all your big smokers all fired up up there three-way, I said, you do a, a great service to Medina and Milan because they can't smell the counts past your That's smoke. That's right. <laughs> Exactly right. Oh, man, man, oh. man. At 731-891-6161, the phone number 4107560 is the Victory Honda text line. We'll take either one. Both of us know how to read, and I know how to punch a button on the phone, so we're in good shape. I'm so glad you do because I don't. I'm going to leave you. I, I talked to you last week about a couple of little uh, things to do in your house, old-time remedies on stuff, and here it is in the hot part of the – yeah, before you get into that, we've got a question uh, coming in on uh, social media. Uh-oh. Uh, where did it go? Where did it go? Da, 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 da. Oh, is that it? Hey. Cloud now? Okay. I got a question. Best way to keep my tools and such from rusting in storage during late fall and winter months? Yeah. Oh, I hope that's soon. I'm about tired of this heat. <laughs> you're, ready to, you're ready to let yours rest for a while. Man. Well, I'll tell you what I do, but I, I, there are other <clears throat> remedies to, to do this, but I kind of wipe mine down with WD-40. I'll yeah. just uh, spray them on there and then wipe them down with an old oily rag that I keep in my truck because they'll rust up a little bit in the toolbox. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, that's the uh, southern cure-all for everything. I put WD-40 right up there with Campo Phenique. Oh, man, I hadn't heard that but in between years. Between those two, you can cure anything. I survived a lot in my younger days with that stuff. On That's a right. cotton ball and just, yeah, and it stang. It stang, <laughs> and it's great for a, it, you can fix a scar and a toothache and a mm -hmm. bruised up spot. That's right. Can you get that stuff anymore? I don't know. I haven't seen it in 100 years. It I, probably had something in it to cause cancer. Yeah, it's something good in it. Yeah, something good in it. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Then I had, but yeah, man, that, you, you had to have that because, uh, what was that other one? Mercure Chrome? Mercure Chrome, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. kind of hard to find that now, too. Yep. M but uh, Methylate. Methylate, yeah. That was yeah. another one, yeah. Yeah. It's orange-looking stuff. You know, I've got some of those bottles uh, on the back of my toilet that even got corks in them. Yeah. With a little bit in the bottom that oh, belonged yeah. to my uh, dear departed mother-in-law. And uh, she, we got some of those bottles back there. And I, I don't think I even want to take the cork out, but... No, man, that's that's a keeper. But if one said Campo Fenique, I would. You would. Because <laughs> I, that, man, I could cure everything you with run Campo down to, run, run over to Lenning's Pharmacy and get you some cotton balls and a bottle of Campo Fenique, right. and you were fixed for the winter, man. I could probably put that on my tools, and it wouldn't rush, well, too. I guarantee <laughs> so, They may dissolve. Well, that, that's that's true. That's, uh, so other but, than other than WD-40, what's another good thing to put on? on I mean, we're talking about, like, work tools not necessarily outdoor tools right or does that work yeah. for all of it well you know if you got big stuff like yard stuff you might want to do something else because you could use up a can of wd-40 pretty quick yeah. but uh um, i've been told that if you had a bucket of sand and you used to put your uh, uh used motor oil <coughs> in it and dump it in there mm -hmm. and and mix it up and if you need to keep your shovel from rusted up you can just stick it down in the sand and go up and down with it a few times. Yep. And, and that kept it that way. I guess you could put your hoe in there too. And if yep. and if you were an old time logger, you'd put your fro in there. Your what? Your fro. Wait a minute. I thought that was a hairstyle from the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's one kind of fro. That's one kind. Yeah, you get a fro. That's what you used to dig out your your, your logs with and, and plane them off. You was making a... a uh, uh, a log house. Okay. Yeah, you'd kind of shape them up a little bit with your fro, and you'd mm. do that in the off season. I watch a show every now. I don't know whether you've ever watched it. Or not. It's on Sunday nights. It's called Barnwood Builders. Have you ever seen that? Yeah, I see the reruns every. Yes, yeah, so I've, 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 but I've never run into that terminology. I know about. I know everything there is to know about a draw knife. I know what that does oh, and how yeah. to use that and all that kind of stuff. And because they use they uh, they're they're purists. They use they do it the way the pioneer guys did it. Well, on camera they do. On camera, that's but true. But they've yeah. had a few slips up. I've seen a bandsaw show up every now and then. That's true. Oh yeah, they. I mean, they do use some. They use chainsaws. They're not, you know, they're not cutting everything with a with a crossbit axe or. Anything. I like that. 
I mean, yeah. and I like the way they do that. Yeah. And and you know those they take those cabins apart. Yeah. And they move them around, and especially the ones that were put together with the wood pegs. Oh yeah, and that is so cool. You know, and yet they're as strong as a brand new building. Or strong. Right I mean, those things have been sitting there for 150 years, some of them. Well, you yeah. know, And, they're, you know, the dovetail joints. And, and, and it kills me how they can take two logs that don't fit together just right. Maybe they were from two different cabins and they had to put them together. And, and one of those, two of those guys, oh, they, they take that, that, uh, that 12, 14-inch chainsaw mm-hmm. and, and make it fit like it had run through a, a milling machine. It's amazing what those guys oh, can they, do. They can do it, and then, then you slap that chinking in there between them yep. and, and seal it up, yep. and uh, so you don't get a draft coming through the log. Exactly. But, uh, oh, I'd, no. like to, I'd like to do that one time. That would that would be interesting. What chink? Just build a log cabin. Oh, well, yeah. I, I've built a log cabin. I have done one. It was yep. a kit. Yep. Uh, that we put together. And, Lincoln and, logs. <laughs> <laughs> well, make that makes two now. <laughs> That's about as far as oh, I got. Oh, you got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> now, people out there that are less than 50 years old going, Lincoln what? Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can still buy those things, by the way. I got some for one of my young ones. We last did, too, Christmas. last Christmas. That's for right. sure. As a matter of fact, you showed me something about that and all these different log kits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some of them you can get are plastic now, I mean, but you can still get the original wood ones. Yeah, yeah uh, I found a set at uh, Cracker Barrel. Oh, can you say that in here? Yeah. It, Cracker, <laughs> uh, yeah. Up there, yeah, that up other the story. road, yeah. yeah, up the road, one with the yellow sign, yeah, yeah. It uh, they uh, they had them up there, so hmm. a lot of that vintage stuff. The oh good, yeah, the good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. You're listening to Tricks of the Trade with John Allen on this Saturday morning. It's eight seventeen, and uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, about ninety seconds or so, and we'll be back with more. So stay with us. Jackson Off-Road, we are a complete automotive service center that does work on area business fleets, servicing and repairing both diesel and gas engines. Our experienced technicians and advanced technology will upgrade your company's vehicle's performance, saving you significant dollars. Graham Snack Food said, Jackson Off-Road keeps our fleet of vehicles on the road in a timely manner, regardless of what repairs are required or what time of the day or night we call for service or repair. Jackson Off-Road, online and on the 45 Bypass. Gary Sinise, best known as Lieutenant Dan in the movie Forrest Gump and an advocate for America's servicemen and women, will be the featured speaker for the 56th Benefit Dinner at Freed Hardeman University on December 4th. Students need your help now more than ever. Help provide scholarships by visiting FHU.edu. Gary Sinise at the FHU Benefit Dinner. Get your tickets and sponsorship today. Hi, I'm Rodney Dean. And I'm Geraldine. For a long time, we've been telling you about Dave's Automotive Service. But here's some things you may not know. Dave's is the oldest and most experienced shop in the county. He has great prices on oil changes. Dave also does tune-ups, brake repair, and engine repair. And he has the most updated diagnostic equipment for vehicle repair. Like when that service engine soon light comes on, he can check it out in a flash. So if your ride's on the blink and need some TLC, don't grab a hammer, just grab the phone and dial 696-4351 and set up an appointment today. Dave's Automotive, located on Highway 88 between Alamo and Murray City at the 412 intersection. Dave knows autos. Oh, by the way, I never found my hammer, did you? Uh, yeah, but I gave it away. Why? Well, if you keep working on things with it, soon we won't have anything left. You never let me do nothing. This is WTJS, Alamo, Jackson, and WKBL, Huffington, News Talk, West Tennessee. It is News Talk West Tennessee and the News Talk Jackson and y'all.com. We're out there on the social media, on Facebook Live, all three of those locations, uh, along with uh, here at uh, 93.1 and 1250 AM, WKBL in Covington, Tennessee. All folks over in Tipton County with a simulcast over there. We're glad to have all of West Tennessee with us this morning. This is Tricks of the Trade with this guy right here, John Allen. No matter who we are, we are. That's I, right. I can't keep up all those names myself, but we're, we're just spread out all over the kitchen table. We are, man. We we cover from river to river and border to border. That's pretty good. Yep, yep. And some of them down on one of them borders south of us need us. Do they? They, they need help down there. They, they really need do. a lot of help. In that, in that Mississippi neck of the woods. Uh-huh. Yeah, they, they need to be listening. We'll talk a little slower then. Oh, real slow. <laughs> <laughs> 
I had a good friend of mine who was a uh, a uh, bankrupt, federal bankruptcy judge, and he got called to to go to New York to sit on a panel up there one time. Uh oh. And he had all the all the New York lawyers sitting in front of him, and the Boston lawyers in front of him. And he said, now let's get this out of the way early on. He said, I'm from the South, and I think we have, may have a language barrier. So for your edification, I'm going to slow it down just a little bit. <laughs> 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 and if you ever knew him, he had a Southern draw like nobody's oh, business. Oh, was that Mr. Harvey? It was not Oh, that's who yes. I thought yeah. it was, yeah. Yeah, his, his favorite way to tell you how to get somewhere was to use the term over. Over. Mm -hmm. O V A I R. That's up there with that, uh, uh, over and yonder. Yonder. That's, that's exactly right. right. Yeah. I know yeah, exactly, exactly where exactly that right. spot is. That's yeah. right. 731 891 6161. Text is 410 7560. We need to talk to you this morning because uh, we've known each other so long, we're kind of tired of talking to each other. That's right. <laughs> well, I'm going to jump into something here. We're talking about retro stuff a little while ago, things mm -hmm. that are kind of coming back. There has uh, now become a new wave of something that is really old, but people think it's new decor. Mm, what's that? It's a uh, shiplap siding. Now. Yes. Now, explain that to me. Everybody it looks wants, just like old boards on a wall to it, me. It's That's all it is. <laughs> that's the, and, and they charge more for it. We used to do shiplap with our scraps. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean... Yeah, all that amounts to is is cutting a groove in a board on one edge back about a half inch mm -hmm. and then running your jack plane down the side of it to make a notch and then you use that to lap over another board right and uh you you did that on the outside siding you had the ship lap siding then you had what they call the old 105 siding that had a little fancy uh scooped out spot in the top of it right which you can't find that anymore, and probably because you had to paint it, and paint won't stick to it. Never did, never would. <laughs> never would. <laughs> and and uh, it, it, anyway, that's a different story. But anyway, shiplap siding has made its way back into the inferior desecrator. I mean, the inferior decorators. <laughs> uh, 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 what, what repertoire? Repertory. Yeah. 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 You use repertoire, and you charge more for it. That's true. That's right. That's so, true. Yeah. So anyway, that's like it, patina. Yeah, you, know, you can't charge it if you tell them it's got dirt on it. That's right. Or cow poop. As yeah, in you, this case. you've caught on to the trade. There you go. Hey, I, I need right. to get into business. You, you're ready to go. <laughs> you could be an inferior desecrator. I in, have in, been. In, that's right. <laughs> All right, so here we go. We got uh, everybody's wanting the shiplap siding. And if you go to one of these stores, you have to buy it in a little package. What? It's, it's wrapped up in little packages. It's kind of like bead board is wrapped up in little packages, which everybody's porch ceiling used to be beadboard. Yeah, sure. Now it's fancy trim, and you pay dearly for it. Mm -hmm. But it but it comes in little bitty cellophane bags of about 10, 12 foot in a bag, and they charge dearly for it. And it's not thick like it used to be. They've shaved it down to... Uh, make it cost half as much and charge twice the amount for oh, it. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. But it, uh, you can get this shiplap siding now and, uh, and buy it and put it in on your wall. Now, what people will do, I see a lot of it in utility rooms where they want it to make, make it look older. Around yeah. Look like an old right. washroom. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And, and, and they'll tack it on top of your sheetrock and uh, let it lap over. But yep. they don't have the grooves in what this stuff you buy now. It, it They just want you to slap it up on the wall and leave a little gap between it. Oh. Some people will even paint between the boards to make it a different color. To make It looks like you're looking outside. In other words, it's dark. Okay. Now, why, I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I don't want to sound like I'm getting uppity because of all these big words I'm throwing yeah. around. Okay. But in, in the interior decorating thing, they're using this shiplap, as I see on TV from time to time, uh -huh. for the accent wall uh, yes accent and they make it a different color yes when my world starting out accent wall was just you didn't have enough material to do the fourth one so you put something else up there <laughs> exactly. aka scraps that's where your scraps came from 
<laughs> but uh, uh, we were born in a better time, weren't oh, we? Oh <laughs> man, it was a good time. Uh, we'll never go back, but it, no, I was glad to have been a part of me it. Me too. Me too. You know, we. You, 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 you needed more lumber, you just went and cut another tree. True. And now you can't cut trees anymore. Oh, heaven forbid, no. Mm-mm. You know, me and my grandmother, I, I'm jumping all over the place this morning, <laughs> but, you know, my, uh, I think Statue of Limitations has run out on this. Yeah, probably. But, but my Uncle John uh, gave me, when I was a little fellow, I might have been 13, 14 years old, a little wood lathe. Mm-hmm. It was only 18 inches but it could handle of a six-inch log. And uh, believe it or not, I used to make table lamps when I was a little fella. Wow. And uh, I could turn a lamp on that lathe. And my favorite wood of choice was cedar. And cedar is kind of hard to come by. Yeah. Uh, but Natchez Trace Park is full of it. <laughs> or used to be. <laughs> or used to be. Now, my grandfather is responsible for planting probably half of the loblolly pines in Natchez Strait Park. <laughs> that's true, folks. Loblolly pines, that's what they call it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he worked on that W.O.R. something program that, yeah. who was that, uh, George Washington Roosevelt? What, I don't remember. Who was that guy way back that? Uh, T- Roosevelt? Roosevelt, yeah. Yeah, was, yeah. Had that work program going on. Yeah. So they built this park. Well, they also planted a bunch of cedar trees. Well, for $75 at a yard sale, when I was a young fellow, we found a used chainsaw. Now, back then, chainsaws were chainsaws. Mm-hmm. They were heavy. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, I mean, it's like 50 pounds or toting around a youngin' under your arm just trying to cut these logs. And it made a lot of racket, and they were really cantankerous. But I got one that worked. Old yellow is what I used to call that chainsaw. <laughs> and I could get me and my grandmother, bless her heart, she's a great old gal, we... We would, we would uh, get in the back of her Galaxy 64 Black Galaxy 500, right? take off to uh, Natchez Trace Park, and we would find blown down cedar trees out in the woods. Hmm. And I'd cut them up into logs, and we'd fill them, the back end of her trunk up with cedar logs and bring them to the, to the little workshop I had here in Jackson over on College Street, which was a garage at one time right. that had pictures of pancakes on the inside that came from Kroger's because that's where Mama used to work. Ah, okay, I got yeah, you. Yeah, just giving you a little information. Yeah, there. just drawing painting the picture. Painting, painting the, the picture. picture. Painting the picture. But yeah, I've made a lot of lamps out of those Natchez Trace uh, cedar logs that uh, they, they had that white on the outside and that red on the inside. And that when you turn those, it really made a good little good little lamp there. Now, why in the world did I bring all this up? We were we were, we were talking about retro things retro and, and your, and your yeah. little lathe which My little came lathe. to mind. Yeah. And then we got to, uh, back to the shiplap. Yeah. So, now, the thing of it is, the shiplap you're buying now at the stores, most of it's not wood. It's composite. Yes. It is uh, MDF. That's, that's it. Yeah. Modified density fiberboard. Oh. That just word alone makes it cost money. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> and uh, you have to put that up. And uh, the only little thing I'm going to tell you about modified density fiberboard is when you cut it with a saw, mm-hmm. paint the end of it. Because if you put that raw edge up on the wall and then you go to slop and paint on it, mm-hmm. it'll make it swell up a little bit kind of feather out and get a little fuzzy on the edges right so make sure that you wipe it down with a little uh a little dab of paint on the ends to seal it before you you put it up same way we used to have to do masonite siding yeah and uh that stuff is that stuff pretty well gone now you it's know? gone they've yeah. replaced that with cement board yeah hardy board they used hardy to call board that is yeah. what they call mm-hmm. it and, and uh, that's cement board that's pretty good stuff yeah yeah, yeah. And, and and now you can get it where it's stamped and it actually looks like got a wood grain to it. Oh yeah, yeah. Some of the original, the first ones were just smooth like the masonite was. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can remember going to some of those old masonite houses and I would kind of lean up on the house, you know, to, to steady myself and my thumb would go through the siding. Oh yeah, <laughs> or or people would use an air gun to put it up uh-huh. and have the 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 uh, pressure <laughs> too high and they'd shoot that uh, nail. The head of the nail would go into the masonite, which within six months that would swell up like a dead frog, and make a big old pucker on the side of your 
uh, your house, and you had a whole house full of puckers there. And it really <laughs> made it look look bad. We got a phone call over there. We do. Let's see if we can get this thing to operate this morning. Go ahead, John. Good morning, and welcome to Tricks of the Trade. Good morning, sir. How are y'all this morning? Oh, we're Good. doing great. What's going on? Well, I live out here in Murray City, gentlemen, and uh, I've got some plumbing that I need to get done. i got a whirly bird on top of the house that needs repaired and a couple of other things around here, and I just wondered if you could give me a recommendation of whom to you. Well... Up in your area, I don't mind telling you, I don't know a soul. Now, we do that kind of work. I I don't use this show to advertise my business, but that is just happens to be what we do. We do a lot of those home repairs, but uh, it would be a while before I could get to you. Uh, We're kind of backed up right now, but, but that's something we can handle. Now, I don't have a list, per se, of, of other people to do that kind of work because we're kind of a dying breed. Uh, there's not many good ones left. <laughs> so, uh, but I tell you what, You're right about that. yeah. Uh, I tell you what, write, write this number down. This is my office number four, two, seven, 1120. If you'll give me a call next week okay. and, and if I'm not there, leave your name and I'll call you back with a couple of uh, names that I might uh, be able to help you out, including my own. And uh, if, if we need to come take a look at it, be happy to do it. Well, I appreciate that. I sure do. That's 427-1120. Yes, sir. That's here in Jackson, Tennessee, and I appreciate you calling this morning. Thank you, sir. Appreciate uh, you. Uh, your right. advice on uh, that. Okay. Have a great day. Thank you, caller. And uh, we got we got another one hanging. You want to go to there? Or, yeah, let's yeah, go. Let's, take let's another go. phone call. Good right, morning and welcome. Uh, let me hit it one more time. There we go. Now. Good morning and welcome. Good, good morning. How are you today? I'm doing good. good. Uh, earlier, a caller was asking about uh, tools to keep them from rusting. Yeah. I tell you something I found works really, really good. Boiled linseed oil. So you're exactly right. Nobody uses it. A lot of people, a lot of people don't even know what it's for. Uh, and as far as you can wipe your shovel handles down with it, let it set for you know a little bit, then wipe the excess off, and that protects them from the weather. Boil. Don't buy regular linseed oil because that stuff won't dry. It'll stay tacky and gummy six years from now. That's right. You're exactly <laughs> boiled right. Boiled linseed oil. Yeah, it, it's a good good thing to use that very people, you, you're right, don't even know what it is. But uh, a lot of the old-timers used to use that all the time in finishing furniture and uh, uh, exterior planks yep. and things of that. But you are right. The linseed oil will do the trick. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, our old military rifles, that's what they were uh, protected with, with oiled linseed oil. You may be right on that. I, that's something I don't know, but uh, I would imagine that would work, too. Now, I, I do tell people, if you're going to refinish the gun stock, I don't really recommend boiled linseed oil because you're talking about turning it dark. So well, dark, you can't hardly see the grain anymore. Yeah, it'll, it'll, get, uh, yeah. it'll get almost black, and if you get too much on there, it, you, yeah. like you said, it will gum up a little bit, but... Uh, the bold is always good about drying if you let it penetrate good between coats. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right, I want to hang up and listen to your show. Well, all right, Thank well thanks for calling in this morning. Appreciate that. Lines are open this Thank morning. Uh, 731-891-6161. That's it. Or the text line at 731-410-7560. Any way you want to do it. Do you, do you when you're talking to people just in normal conversation, or one of the callers here on on the air? Does, does sometimes when they say something, it triggers something else in your mind. We've been doing that all morning. Is that what we've been doing? Yeah, I thought we were. We're talking babbling. about one thing, and I. <laughs> well, that is called babbling. That's a that's no, is a refined babbling. A refined babbling. Yeah, that's true. And the, you're you're in uh, Babylonia right here. That's right. <laughs> So no, he just he just mentioned linseed oil, and that struck a chord in my feeble mind. Was linseed oil not one of the main ingredients in what we used to know as linoleum? Yes, I thought so. And asbestos along with it. 
In the, in the linoleum? In the linoleum. Hmm, no wonder it lasted so long. That's right. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. And I, I don't know why they stopped all that. It made it a little brittle. Yep. But I guess they found some young and gnawing on it one time and found that it was hazardous to your health. Yeah, you're like go- they were gnawing on the window seals yeah, all the time. Stop gnawing on the linoleum over there. <laughs> now, I got this now, here, another one of those things that just triggered. We, when we were in, in Pigeon Forge back years ago, we decided to go through the Titanic Museum. Have you ever done that? I saw it when it was in Las Vegas. Yeah. And uh, about all I saw was a bunch of broken dinner plates, but go ahead. The one up there is really nice because you, it's actually like you take a tour through the ship, sort of. Oh, and, oh and you're seen that. And you're one of the characters. I happen to have drawn uh, John Astor, the richest man in the world. Oh, good for Boy, you. Boy, did they miss that one. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the trivia questions that they asked through there was what the, the, uh, the grand staircase in the Titanic what was the the flooring? It was the most expensive flooring available when it was put down on the on the staircase, the huh. treads in the staircase in the Titanic, and the and the you know the the possible answers were you know marble and and uh, quartz and all kinds of things like that. And I I can't verify this, but I think I remember that the correct answer because nobody got it right. The correct answer was linoleum. Might have been. It was brand new at the time, and it was the most expensive floor covering available, so that's what they put in there. They used to put that down with a torch to make it mm. bend. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was some good stuff. Get you know, to, you couldn't scratch it, couldn't break it. It was there for, for a while if you wanted it to be, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. 731-891-6161. If I'm wrong about that, tell me so. I don't mind. Well, somebody else will answer and say yeah. hello. They just won't be able to answer your question. That's true. 410-7560 is the Victory Honda text line. We'll take your, your questions or comments there. We're talking about retro things, and were you, or were you were you headed to another, another tack, another direction here? Well, I ran across something the other day that I didn't know how sensitive an issue it was to some people with hearing problems. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I walked right into that one. <laughs> but, but, yeah, uh, you know, people, we, and we've talked about this on previous shows, uh, exhaust fans. Yeah. And they put off these uh, hums and rattles and, yeah. And it's very annoying to people that have hearing problems because of background noises and uh, what's that what's that uh, disease you got where you hear the ringing in your ears? Uh, tinnitus or Tinnit- tintinitis or something like that. Yeah. Meniere's or what? Meniere's disease. Oh, that's dizzy yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, whatever it is. If you got one of those little problems, sometimes the hum or the roar of that ceiling fan just is deafening to you. Mm-hmm. You can't carry on a conversation. Ran across the customer. <clears throat> excuse me, like that a few weeks ago and wanted me to change her ceiling, I mean, her ad- exhaust fans out. And she says, I want something that I can't hear it. And it kind of <laughs> caught me by surprise. I said, you want a fan that you can't hear? She says, exactly. I said, how are you going to tell when it's on? <laughs> <laughs> she said, that's why I want one that I can't hear. <laughs> so anyway. It, it, I, I kind of d- did a little research on it. I actually did that word that I don't even like to hear it anymore. Google Googled it, yeah. I Googled it, and and there's these little fans called whisper quiet fans. I've heard of that. And uh, I went and found a couple of them and took them and put them in the ladies' bathroom. And the thing that made them, and this is what just beat all, because the there was nothing, and I do mean nothing different about this fan than a normal fan, except for the price tag. It was twice as expensive. Uh, of course, of course. But where a good exhaust fan has a uh, doesn't have a propeller in it, it's got that little uh, squirrel cage, yeah, squirrel thing. cage blower. You know, yeah. little things that, that whirls around and around. It had had one of those a squirrel cage blower in it. Most every normal exhaust fan has about a three-inch exhaust on it Mm -hmm. and a little flapper on the end of it, and that's where all the air goes. Well, that's where your noise comes from. That's where all your uh, the the, the air whistling around up there makes the roar of the fan. So all they did, and I'm sure somebody that 
had a white coat on, dreamed this up. <laughs> they increased the exhaust vent to six inches. Okay. And when you do that and that little motor kicks in, it don't make any racket. Really? It's as quiet and you can't hear its own. The only way you can tell its own is if the light comes on with it, which is the way I wired them up. Where right. when you flip the switch, the fan Everything and the came light on. came right. on. But it was the quietest little fan. Now, finding six-inch exhaust duct to go with it was a little trick. Uh, they sell them at the big box stores, but they don't sell the exhaust pipe, or at least the person <laughs> that that told me that they had the fans couldn't find it. I'll put it that way. There, yeah, that's more and, like it. Yeah. And uh, so, so I had to go to a, a HVAC store. And they had the duct work for it. It's flexible pipe, just like you run off your dryer. Yeah. But it's six inches. Well, I hooked that puppy up and ran it up and vented it to the outside and works like a charm. Hmm. And uh, helped that lady out. So any of y'all that having trouble with the uh, uh, roar of a bathroom exhaust fan gets a little annoying. You can get one of these little, what they call, whisper quiet fans. Right. And the, the sone level is next to nothing hmm. and uh, but it's still, even with that bigger bigger hole it's still got proper suction to get the oh man make your hair stand up really okay yeah. so it's actually more so then yeah it uh, that's right even even with me i could feel it you could uh yeah i took first thing i did is took a wad of toilet paper and just kind of wadded it up and flipped it up on the ceiling and mm -hmm. it stuck hmm and uh, I knew it was doing a good job right then. Yep, I'd say so. And it pulled out, uh, it pulled out the vapors from the shower and the vapors from the toilet and everything else, and, and does a pretty good job. All right, here's the question in in that uh, in that vein: How did you vent that to the outside, the bath fan? I went right through the roof with it. I got a little turtle vent and uh, put on the roof, and uh, stuck the other end of the pipe up into the turtle vent and screwed it in place. And uh, took everything to the outside, so that's the way you do it. Right. Is that uh, is it code now that you vent all of those bathroom vents and things like that to the outside? Oh yes, got to take everything to the outside. Because I can remember some of my older houses back years ago. It was just run through, and it just vented it into the attic. Well, that's what everybody did, and then they came in with all this blown insulation, and they would blow it up next to that fan and close the damper off, and all of a sudden your fan wouldn't work anymore. True. Yep. Yep. So yep. Uh, they 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 did that, and the same thing with uh, vena hoods. Mm -hmm. You, I couldn't tell you how many vena hoods were put in when they became popular back in the '60s and '70s, and they just went right up into the attic, and the pipe just stopped. Yep. And then after about a year or two, here come the fire trucks, <laughs> because uh, in the South we junk. have a tendency to fry everything. Yes. That's where the good stuff comes from. Oh yeah. And. Uh, you know, when the inside of that pipe would uh, uh, kind of get covered up with grease on the inside, and then you'd have a little flash fire from your iron skillet, yep. and it'd catch fire, and it'd go right up that pipe uh -huh. and catch your decking on fire up in the attic, and you don't know what's going on until somebody next door comes knocking and says, hey, you're supposed to have smoke coming out <laughs> into your house. <laughs> I don't think so. Wasn't that way when I left. That's you know? right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. uh, texter, texter says thanks. So oh. well, we we got that, and I hope hope that was what you were looking for. Four one zero seven five six zero is that text number. If you'd like to join in there, eight nine one six one six one. We'll put you directly into the phone system here at ninety three one, and we'll be more than happy to talk to you there. Uh, we are on Facebook Live right now. Y'all dot com. Leave the apostrophe out. It's y a l l dot com. News Talk West Tennessee and News Talk Jackson. You can get us uh, in all of those places, and it'll be out on the YouTube's channel uh, a little bit uh, later on in the morning. We're going to take one last quick break, and we'll be back with more on Tricks of the Trade. Stay with us. We're going to talk Have you been about thinking about boogers. selling your home, or has your home been on the market but still hasn't sold? You need to call my friends at the Haltom Home Team, 984 2200. The Haltom Home Team has an aggressive marketing system that puts them on a whole different level than other agents here in Jackson. Freddie Garrett here. After listing my home, 23 days and 17 showings 
later, I had a full price offer. Take it from me, personal service and attention to detail are important, and Todd and Beth handle both. And don't just believe these guys. Check us out on Zillow, the number one real estate website, where we are ranked number one in sales for Jackson and also have over 200 five-star reviews. They can help you negotiate through multiple offers to get you the most money for your home. And there's no risk. Call the Haltom Home Team at 731-984-2200. That's 731-984-2200. Go to HaltomHomeTeam.com. Oh, and start packing. Last time we checked, money didn't grow on trees. So XMC, your Xerox authorized sales agent, is proud to provide cost-effective office equipment and electronic document management to help save you money. Combined with the power and resources of the recognized leader in office products and document services, Xerox and XMC offer you the widest array of office products and document solutions available anywhere. Visit XMCINC.com and allow XMC to help boost productivity, enhance collaboration, and reduce costs at your office. Braxton was diagnosed with chloride plexus carcinoma, a brain tumor. St. Jude is helping us put away our fears. We have an amazing team that fights for the best outcome for Braxton. He has the best chance here. I don't have to worry that how much is that bag of fluid going to cost me? Can I afford it to save my child's life? The donations, they're paying for me to live every day with my son stress-free and enjoy every day with him. I wish there was a word bigger than thank you, more close to the heart, because thank you is not enough. They've given me hope. They've given me my son. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. Finding cures, saving children. Learn more at stjude.org. We are back. It is Saturday morning, and it is Tricks of the Trade with John Allen. Your phone calls are welcome. That's a great part of the show, 891-6161 with a 731 uh, prefix. And then, of course, the text line, 731 sponsored by Victory Honda. And back to John. You know, we're going to get into an ugly subject. It's kind of nasty, and people don't like to talk about it. Yep. But it's real. It is real, and uh, we're just going to jump right on. In I'll, there. I'll be, I'll, you know, I'm going to be right up front. I'm going to tell you that I've had them. Have you? I have. Well, I've had them too. Yeah, and I've had them in about three or four houses this week. Oh, oh! Don't tell uh, me it's, it's it's taking on the coronavirus. These oh things are, man, these things you, are spreading. It, it is. It's just like they start in one subdivision and they go to house to house to house. Oh no! And y'all know what we're talking about. It's pipe boogers right yeah yep pipe boogers are running rampant right now why what 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 causes the increase in the pipe booger population it, it is it's this heat and uh-huh. humidity and all the dirty air that's in your air conditioner and it washes down off your coals and it goes down into the pan underneath your unit mm-hmm. and it mixed in with water condensate water and it gets to flowing down to that little three quarter inch hole in the corner of your uh, air conditioner and it goes out Mm -hmm. well sometimes they don't flow as well and and the boogers start to grow one will latch to another one and another one will latch to another one and next thing you know they've all joined hands and you got yourself a clog (laughs) you got a colony of pipe boogers And, okay. and they will they will back up, and you won't know what's going on until water, and they ain't a drop of rain. Yep. Anywhere it's not raining, sun shining, and all of a sudden you got water running out of your ceiling, mm-hmm. and that's because pipe boogers have caused a calamity in your drain pan up under your air conditioner that might be up in the uh, attic, as most air handlers are on split systems. Right. So. When you get those pipe boogers, you got to get rid of them because you got water running and people panic because it's not like ordinary water. They'll they'll run out to their water meter and turn off the water thinking it's a plumbing leak, mm-hmm. and it keeps on running. Yep. 
And uh, that doesn't do it. And then they get to calling for help. And then I'll get a phone call and they'll say, John, I got water running out of my ceiling and I can't get it to stop. I've run, I have uh, turned the water off. When can you get out here? I said, well, it may be a little while. Now, one time this, there was this emergency like this going on, and I told that lady I'd be out there in about three hours. She said, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Can you make it four? i got to go to the beauty shop. <laughs> but anyway. Nothing. Priorities, man. Yeah, Priorities. That's right. It's all about priorities. But anyway, uh, what I said to that person just made them pucker up, and I got one of those southern do what? And I said, well, I'll tell you how to stop the water. And they said, okay, tell me. Tell me quick. It's running out. I said, go turn your air conditioner off. And they said, what? <laughs> and I said, go turn your air conditioner off, and the water will stop. Yeah. Well, they didn't understand that. But the, the, the point is, you know, you're creating condensate water mm -hmm. from the air conditioner because it's hot outside, and that water is running down into the pan, and the pan's clogged up. Turn off the air. Well, you know, when it's 95-plus degrees outside, that's one thing you don't want to do is cut off your air conditioner. But you got to do it. Yep. Either that or go grab a shop vac and go upstairs and start sucking it out of the pan, and uh, you can do that too. But when you get all of the panic aside in time to get down to business, right? you got to get rid of them pipe boogers. That's true. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do that. Now, the easiest and where most people may have this around the house is to get a shop vac. And if you can go up and get a shop vac, take the filter out of it because we're going to be dealing with sucking water right now. Yep. Suck out all the water you can out of your pan. And when you get it empty, go ahead and get rid of uh, uh, the water in your shop vac. Otherwise, you're going to spill it and make another problem on, your, <laughs> on the ceiling in another spot. And then come back, and you can first try to take that hose on your shop vac and put it down on that uh, discharge hose, which is normally, if it's a residence, a three-quarter inch piece of white PVC. Stick the nozzle over that, and sometimes, if you're lucky, it's kind of like sniffing real hard. Mm -hmm. You can suck that pipe booger right out of there. Okay. Now, if you can't suck that pipe booger out, Sometimes you can reverse the flow of that air. It's kind of like blowing your nose. You can blow that booger out <laughs> and, and, and get it out that way. I just had a mental picture of somebody that just tuned in. That's right. <laughs> I didn't know this was a medical it's, show. <laughs> it's not real complicated, folks. But I mean, we could have visual aids, but it really wouldn't do any good. That's right true. <laughs> so... But now sometimes when that booger just gets logged in there <laughs> so good, you got to get some outside help. <laughs> so, uh, and and, and Mucinex DM ain't gonna do it. <laughs> we we got the we got the mechanical Mucinex coming up. So sometimes you gotta get a little help. And believe it or not, you know, ingenuity always wins over this is yeah. somebody can can find out how to use compressed air to really blow them boogers out of there. <laughs> so, right. so, so the the fine folks in the heating and air industry have got a little pistol that you can buy. Hmm. All it is is a hose with a little flared fitting on one end and a spot on the other end that you can unscrew the end of it and put one of these little CO2 cartridges in like you used to get with your pellet gun. Yeah, your pellet gun, right. Yeah. And you'll screw that in and then hold it a uh, little flared rubber end down in the pipe with two fingers mm -hmm. with that, uh, with that uh, pipe, uh, the hose coming out between your fingers. Yeah. Kind of get the picture there. I got you. All right. And then reach over with the other hand and pull the trigger. And pshh, there it goes. Mm, hey, now you're doing sounds. That's right. <laughs> you, can, you can blow those boogers out. Now, uh, I have had a couple of situations where you really – had to do something more so strong than that and yep. actually get a compressor and uh, really put, oh, really? Some, uh, that's put a, some air behind that's it. That's a major booger right there, yeah. That's a major booger. I <clears> mean, <throat> that, that's, yeah. a, that's almost a blood clot, yeah. you know, you get in there. <laughs> Ooh, don't go but, there. <laughs> uh, but anyway, but uh. yeah, you know, most condensate water, uh, there's some of them that go into indirect drains. 
But a lot of them just go to your overhang yeah. and uh, drip out of the outside. Now, under these new fancy modern codes, you can't do that anymore. you got to yeah. pipe it down. Yeah. Let it go into a reservoir, which is nothing but a hole full of gravel <laughs> uh, in the ground because they don't want nobody to make a puddle in the yeah, yard A dry anymore. well, basically. Yeah, it's a dry well. Okay. Right. Hey, you've been watching, hadn't you? You've been I listening. Have, man. I know. I know what yeah. I'm talking about. So, you know, you got to make a little dry well right there. So, anyway... That that's a story about pipe boogers. Yeah, yeah. And if you call your heat and air guy, and he says uh, he says to you on the phone, uh, "Is it a booger?" Do not answer him. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> All right. Oh wait a minute. I got. I've got to. While we've been while we've been uh, pipe boogering and doing other answering questions, the uh, the uh, ghost poet is with us. Uh oh. And we've got two poems for you today. Two. Yeah. Now one of them goes back to last week when you were talking about putting a quarter on the flapper yeah. in the in the tank, you know, uh-huh. to get it to, to go down good and we're running we're running close. So I'll do these quickly. This one goes back to the to the to the booger days. Okay. I mean not the booger days, but the quarter days. It says John Allen's quarter on the flapper, so America has him to blame for the shortage of coins. <laughs> good old USA will never be the same. Uh, <laughs> That's where all those quarters are. They're in the commode tank. Yeah. 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 Or on your on your record player to keep it from skipping. Exactly. Absolutely. Now, now I, I, that's a little heavy. We used to use a dime on that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And dime people wonder why yeah. there's a coin shortage. Exactly, now. exactly. It's John's fault, so call him at uh, 14. No. <laughs> there you go. All right, here's your other point. Okay. And this this goes back to some things that, that you've been doing off and on. It says, poor, unlucky John Allen. Grabbing live wires and a bump in his head. <laughs> Jimmy, put him in some bubble wrap before he ends up dead. <laughs> <laughs> that from the ghost poet, one of our, our, uh, our contributors here at Grace Broadcasting and That's does a great, great job. He always has something current for whatever is being talked about on the air that's right yeah that's, that's, that's some good stuff ghost yeah. or gp we're we're on first name basis now first oh, letter yeah i call him gp now GP. yeah ghost poet yeah that's, yeah that's we've right. got we've got about uh about two minutes anything anything you want to wrap up with that uh well are we are, th- are we through with the boogers we through with the boogers but i do want to say one more thing about yeah. heating and air pipes right a lot of you might be getting a ring around your ceiling duck mm-hmm where the air comes out, right, or even a dark spot around your hardwood where your air duct comes up through the floor. Mm, I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, and that happens a lot in this neck of the woods, and and that's because whoever put you, your boots in, your pipe boots, and they come up through the floor, they didn't insulate it. Right. And uh, that naked pipe right there that doesn't have a coat on it, or, or, or insulation jacket, will sweat real bad. Mm. And that uh, sweat... And the water will get in onto your sheetrock if it's on the ceiling or next to your hardwood floor where it comes up, and it'll, it'll turn it dark and make a ring. Uh-huh. So uh, if, you, if you're having that problem, you might want to pull that air register up and look down the side of the pipe and see if you see insulation. If you don't, you need to go get you a little pipe insulation and crawl up under your house or go up in the ceiling and insulate right all the way down to the sheetrock if it's in the ceiling or up to the to the bottom of your subfloor if it's in the floor and cover those pipes up real good and that will stop it from sweating. May have to get a little spray adhesive to use to get it to stick and some duct tape. But if you'll get those pipes coated and while you're down there, look around. And uh, if you see anything dripping from your other pipes, mm-hmm. you might want to pull that insulation back and run some duct tape around the pipe joints. Right. And that will also keep it from sweating and put that insulation back in. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Another one of those things called the tricks of the trade. There you go. Yes. <laughs> we have one final text, and i I, I got to read it. Okay. Gotta, based on what we've been talking about. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it says, Great show on boogers. <laughs> Glad you didn't blow it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 
<laughs> so That's with, just not right. <laughs> exactly right. And with that, we're about to turn this thing over to Jimmy Leach, the investigator. John, it's been fun as always. And we'll do it again next Saturday morning here on 93.1 and everywhere else we can think to put it. Uh, don't forget it's on y'all.com, uh, News Talk West Tennessee and News Talk Jackson uh, on the uh, Facebook Live and on YouTube later in the morning. Thanks to John Rawl for taking care of all of that uh, that complicated stuff for us. Oh, yeah. And uh, we'll be back with John uh, next Saturday morning. Jimmy Leach coming up. It will also be on Thursday afternoon on your show. That's right. Yes, that, that little quick version is known as Honey Do's and Honey Don'ts. Known as a teaser. A teaser, that's right. <laughs> and, and so if you like being teased, <laughs> we'll see you Thursday <laughs> here on 93.1. Have a great weekend, folks.